you up. He turned you all around. He placed your feet on a solid ground. Let him rise. Let God rise. Let the spirit rise. Let God 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 rise. He saved your soul. He made your whole. Some of you should have been dead. Sleeping in your grave. But look at you today. You're giving God thanks. You're giving him praise.
clap your hands. He's been so worthy. He's been so mighty. I gotta give him praise. There's no God like. There's no God like. There's no God like. Come on and say it. No God like. No God like. There's no God like. 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 I can search all over. Couldn't find nobody. Couldn't call on my mama. Couldn't call on my daddy. Nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. There's no God like Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Nobody like Who healed your body? Who saved your soul? Who made your whole? Nobody like him. Nobody. But you call on Jesus. Hey, nobody like him. Nobody like him. There's nobody like him. Yeah. Come on and say Nobody like him. There's no God like him. Nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. Nobody like feet hallelujah as we give thanks hallelujah there's no God like Jehovah hallelujah
people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I'll heal their land. We need a healing in the land on today, Lord Jesus. We're gonna pray on this morning. Pray for your neighbor. Pray for the land on this morning. Pray that God works a miracle and he does something in this house on this day. Father, we come before you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. God, first of all, we ask that you would forgive us of anything any thought or deed that's been unpleasing in your sight. And Lord, we ask that if you find anything that should not be, Lord, take it out and strengthen us because we want to be holy and we want to be saved. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace and for your mercy and your compassion that fails not. We thank you, Lord God, because you woke us up yet again you breathe the breath of life into our nostrils and you commanded us to rise. And for that, we say thank you. Lord, we realize that it is of no goodness of our own because all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. And for that, we say thank you. God, while we're standing here in your presence, we're going to make a choice on this morning. And God, we're going to choose to worship you on this morning. We're going to choose to give your name the glory. We're going to lay aside every weight and every care. And we're going to honor you for the God that you are. And we want to thank you for the times you brought us over. Thank you for the times you've been a bridge over troubled waters. Thank you, God, for the times that you've been the lifter of our bow down heads. Thank you, Lord, for the times you've healed our bodies. Thank you, Lord God, for the times that you've taken us around the enemy's snare. Thank you, Lord, for the times you kept our sons and you kept our daughters. Thank you for the times you kept that bullet from hitting us. Thank you, oh God, for the times that you kept the 18 wheeler from running us off the road. Thank you, God, hallelujah, for the times that you kept the burglar from coming into our house. Thank you, oh God, for the times that you healed uh, for cancer. Thank you uh, for the tumors that you shrunk. Uh, thank you for the times you brought down high blood pressure. Thank you for the times that you made a way out of no way. We thank you, oh God, just uh, for being God on this morning. Uh, we thank you for the soul that's going to be saved. Uh, we thank you for the one that's going to go down in Jesus' name. Uh, we thank you for being a mind regulator. Uh, we thank you for being a heart fixer. Uh, we thank you for being the dryer uh, of our weeping eyes, oh God. Uh, we thank you for the times uh, you held us in the midnight hour. Uh, and you let us know that everything was going to be all right. Uh, we thank you, Holy Ghost. Hey, God, we bless you. Uh, and we choose to worship you uh, because we remember who you are. Uh, you're the God of every adversity. Uh, you're the God that parted the Red Sea. Uh, you're the God that took the Hebrew boys uh, and you blessed them in the furnace. Uh, and you're the same God that's with us on today. Uh, so we're going to put our hands together. Uh, and we're going to command our flesh to become subject. And we're going to command our soul to magnify you. We're going to command our hearts to rejoice. We're going to bow down and give you the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bless your man servant on this morning. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, touch his body and give him a word on this morning to bless this house in the mighty name of jesus but god most of all when we leave this place let us say that it was good that we were here on this morning that it was good that i was healed on this morning it was good that i pressed my way on this morning we decree and we declare it so in jesus name every grateful heart put your hands together and give god
the praise. Come on, if you love him, tell him thank you. If you're grateful, let him know you appreciate him. In Jesus' name, we bless you, Lord. Our scripture reading will be coming from Isaiah chapter 43. And it reads, beginning at verse number one. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Hey God, hallelujah. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Just look at somebody before you take your seat and tell them you have no reason to fear. Don't be scared on this morning, but free yourself to praise him. Hallelujah. Don't be fearful on this morning. If you feel like run and run, if you feel like dance and dance on this morning, because you have no reason to fear because God is with you. Welcome to the live stream coming from the Sanctuary of Refuge Temple Church, the church in the heart of the city with the people of the city in his heart. Go ahead and turn up the volume and let's have church. I need everybody to put their hands together like this. Hallelujah. The song says if you confess the Lord, call him up. Confess. If you confess the Lord, call him. 
lift in his name. Has God been good to anyone in this house on this morning? Come on, give him one more round of applause. Give him one more hallelujah. Let's try another thank you, Jesus. Can somebody just wave and say, God has been so good. I just can't stop praising his name. It's like a candle Pringles. Every time you pop, you just can't stop. Hallelujah. Every time he does something, I want to praise him more. Every time he wakes me up, I want to tell him thank you one more time. Every time he makes a way, I feel like running and dancing. I just can't stop praising his name. We bless the name of the Lord. God has been good. And we are here on this morning in celebration of our pastor's birthday. And what a month it has started off being and a month that is going to continue to be. I'm here on this morning to introduce our speaker for this morning, Apostle Bradford Berry Sr. Apostle Bradford Berry Sr. is a native of Philadelphia, Pete, Pennsylvania. He owes his early development to his parents who are both deceased. His family was led to the Refuge Church of Christ of the Apostolic Faith where Apostle Henry D. Jones was the pastor. Apostle Jones became a mentor and teacher and soon Barry was being utilized in many aspects of the church ministry. As a minister, Apostle Jones sent Minister Barry to Atlantic City, New Jersey to continue the work he had started. Eventually, young minister was ordained as an elder. After the death of Apostle Jones, Elder Barry was appointed pastor of the Refuge Church of Christ in Pleasantville, New Jersey by Chief Apostle W. L. Monner. The Lord has led Bishop Berry to be a visionary and has placed a global calling on his life. An anointed man of God, Bishop Berry has worked faithfully in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and is diocesan bishop of West Africa. Along with other pastors, he has held joint services called True Love Fellowship that has grown into the annual Lift Him Up Fellowship Conference. A powerful and dynamic preacher Bishop Berry has traveled to Sierra Leone, the Ivory Coast, Liberia, and London, England. Bishop Berry became pastor of Rehoboth Temple Church of Christ, Columbus, Ohio in 2001. In August 2005, Bishop Berry was elected to the International Board of Apostles of the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. As apostle over Region 9, he currently oversees the states of Iowa, Minnesota, Missouri, Northern and Southern Illinois, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Manitoba, Canada, Sierra Leone, Africa, and West Africa Diocese. Apostle Berry and his wife, Norma Baznight Berry, have two children, Brad Jr. and Dejanay, and two lovely grandchildren. And the saints of Rehoboth say they are both honored and blessed to be led by this anointed man of God. I present to some and introduce to others, our speaker for this hour, Apostle Bradford Berry Sr. He will be the next speaking voice you will hear after the selection from our choir. Let us receive them both in Jesus' name. Come with 
drops of mercy shine bright, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of Just shout hallelujah. Now we're going to say it one more time. And this time I want you to say it from the depth of your soul. This time I want you to hear that the angels hear you. Bless the Lord for shining that light of heaven in your heart, in your mind, in your soul. I want the angels to know how much we appreciate him for the great light that he is in our lives. And I want everyone to open their mouth and sing this simple praise with us. Walk in the light, beautiful light. The light of the world. Everybody say it, everybody say it.
you feel the anointing walking down these aisles and squeezing down every pew. Squeeze those hands on this morning. Let somebody know I'm praying with you. I'm praying for you. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. I want to exalt, I want to magnify his holy name. If he's been good to you, give him a praise. If he's been good to you, bless his holy name. Thank you, Lord, for the light. Thank you for walking with us, Lord. Thank you for keeping us, Lord. Thank you for bringing out every high place, breaking every chain, breaking every feather, Lord Jesus. Thank you for allowing your anointing, Lord Jesus, to flow on this morning and touch us, Lord, in a very special way. Now bless your words, sanctified in our hearts, that we might not sin against thee. And all these blessings we ask in Jesus' wonderful name. One more time, let's say it one more time. Everybody, 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 everybody. on this morning to honor the spirit of Christ and we're blessed to be in the southern regional headquarters of the churches of our Lord Jesus Christ amen and we're celebrating uh, Bishop Reed on another year of life health and strength amen we thank God for him I can say that he is a faithful son who's continuing the great legacy of our late apostle, William L. Bonner. Amen. Let's praise God once again for our servant of the house, Bishop Sylvester Lee. You know, I can say that he's one of the few men I can call and talk honestly about anything. Uh, he's the vice chair of our international convention committee, and he and Bishop Wilkins are my bosses. So I've got to be careful what I say on this morning because I take all my direction from them. Amen. Uh, Bishop Reed is a Southern preacher with a New York swag. Amen. That's what we say about it. Amen. That, that's what we say in the corridors when we talk about him. Amen. But we, we want to thank God and uh, for all the rank and file of the clergy that are here with us on this morning. We want to thank God for um, Brother Jason and bless him and he's a very faithful young man I know God's going to do great things with him and through him I want to thank God for our sound tech Tony bless you brother Joan Ella Jones your hospitality and and we want to thank God for sister Shirlene Stewart I think who was the hardest working IWC officer who kept us connected with the IWC when it came into Columbus Ohio on last year let's praise God for sister Shirlene Stewart <laughs> I want to praise God for her husband, Deacon Stewart, who's a Pentecostal historian, and he keeps us connected with the apostolic oneness organizations, and so we thank God for him. And I can't forget on this morning our very fine missionary uh, of the year, 
none other than missionary Natasha Davis. Where she at? Amen. She, she is, she is the, and, and I tell you one thing that she does, and she does faithfully, and, and she does it energetically, and I thank God for her. She keeps us connected to our presiding apostle, Apostle James May, and she keeps us connected with all the things that are going on in the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you, Sister Tasha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to thank God for her hospitality. She forgot to give us dinner on last night, but we said we'd forgive her for that. We had to run over to McDonald's, and but we'll, we'll forgive you. You can make it up to us next time we come. Amen. I want to thank God for the Queen of Columbus, Ohio. Um, Amen. My sunshine on a cloudy day. Let it be. Stand up and say praise the Lord to everybody. And, and I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, uh, she has a blessing for the ladies on this afternoon. So if you haven't planned to come back, come back and be with us uh, on this afternoon. I believe at 4.30, Lady B is going to be uh, presenting, and she has a blessing for you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Uh, on this morning, we're going to look at the ninth chapter of the book of Acts. And, and before I forget, I'm going to give you... We should read, bless you, happy birthday. <laughs> and I tell you the same thing Apostle Bonner used to tell us. It ain't much, just enough for a hamburger <laughs> if you get hungry. God bless you. For those in sharing with us on social media, uh, we're going to be looking at the ninth chapter of the book of Acts. I'm going to ask you to stand and let's read it together. Beginning in chapter one, we'll be reading verse number one. We'll be reading through verse number 15. I may just fall out of reading, but I want you to read it with me. When you have it, say amen. amen. Let's begin reading in verse one, the ninth chapter of the book of Acts. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest. He may bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? And trembling and astonished, he said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth. And he was there three days without sight. Neither did he eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And he and the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street that is called Straight. And I've seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then I, Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many this man how much evil he has done to the saints at Jerusalem. And he hath authority from the chief of priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, go thy way. For he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear the name before the Gentiles 
and kings and the children of Israel. Verse 15, once again, but the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Before you take your seat, find two, three people, shake them by the hand and repeat these words, he chose me. I want to begin by saying emphatically that Jesus saves to the uttermost. And that is a powerful statement of reality. In a nutshell, these scriptures that we have read explains the power of God over sin and shame and the power of Jesus as our mighty savior. When we think of salvation as it relates to the book of Acts, it implies that we should never think that God's arm is too short to save. In Acts, we are introduced to Saul, who was living proof that God can save the worst sinner, even those who fight against salvation, and even those who detest the grace of God. In our own experience, we may have a husband, a wife, we may have children or relatives, that have rejected the call to salvation. We may have friends and acquaintances who have not responded to the call of God, but be encouraged. The good news is that God's word shall not, cannot, will not return void. Jesus can save anyone, no matter how long they fight against his will. The important lesson that we learn from Acts is never believed that God cannot or will not save. Saul was an orthodox Jew who opposed the Christian way. In the early church, they were called the way because they believed the words of Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And Saul had one purpose in mind, and that was to eradicate the way, eradicate the early church by any means necessary. Saul has a resume that qualifies him for the work that God has called him to do. And I want you to know on this morning that you have a resume of experience that also qualifies you for whatever work God has called you to do. A resume takes a look of our, at our historic educational background. A resume takes a look at our work and our history. It is a picture of what you have accomplished in life. A resume speaks volumes about your faithfulness, it speaks volumes about your commitment, and it speaks volumes about your ambitions. Saul's resume was found in the book of Philippians. It's the story of his life before he meets Jesus. And as believers, we all have two resumes. One is before, and the other is after we are called to serve Jesus. Saul was named after King Saul, who was the king of Israel. He was circumcised on the eighth day, meaning that he came from a Jewish home which kept the law. He was born in the tribe of Benjamin, one of two tribes that remained faithful to God when the nation of Israel split. Benjamin was always the first tribe that would go into battle after the tribe of Judah came in, leading God's praise. I thank God for the choir and the praise team on this morning. I thank God have you ushered us in leading us in praise. I, I want you to know that, that Saul had a religious pedigree because he was a Hebrew of Hebrews, which means that he was a Pharisee and the son of a Pharisee. Saul was highly educated. He was a Bible scholar, trained in the rabbinic college of Gamil, and he was one of Israel's greatest preachers and teachers, one of Israel's greatest rabbis. He was also a Roman citizen which means that Saul was a free man. Based on Saul's resume, he should have been on fire for Jesus, but that's not the case. The reputation of Saul was that he wreaked 
havoc in the church. In other words, he was the church's number one enemy and he persecuted anyone who held the title of a believer. Now some of you can remember the time when you laughed and you scorned the people of God. Some of you can remember the time when you were a church hater. I know you look cute on this morning, your Sunday morning best, but look at somebody and say, that was not always the case. I, I, I wanted to remind you, I wanted to remind you that you have a past and you have a history. And, and, and in that past, sometimes uh, uh, we, had, we had little respect for anyone that came to church. We had little respect for anyone that called themselves a believer. We had little respect for anyone that said they love God. But we don't have to have a past history of denial, and we should not live in a past history where we resisted the call of God. The good news is that you don't have to continue to live in denial, look at somebody and say, that was then, but this is now. Saul is an example of how God can use your past to create your future destiny. God uses the good, the bad, and the ugly, and he works it all together for the good to them that are called according to his purpose. Saul was on the road to Damascus to persecute the church. He was on the road to Damascus to persecute believers who received Christ when Saul has a spiritual transformation. It's the moment when he was arrested by God. And if we were standing on the street corner just talking in the hood, we would say it's the moment when the hunter got captured by the gang. The experience of Saul is mirrored by many believers who had no idea that while they were doing their thing, God was doing his thing. Uh, I got to be a little more specific so you don't understand, make sure you understand what I'm saying. In other words, while you were shaking your booty on the gas floor, while you were, while you were dropping it like it was hot, uh, while, 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 while you were smoking your blunts and doing your thing, I want you to know that God was doing his thing. Uh, even you did not recognize what he was doing in your life, uh, even though you didn't know that God was working on you uh, while you were having a good time, the Lord was doing something in your life. God found you on your road to Damascus. You might have been on the way to a party or a nightclub. You might have been on the way to a night of pleasure, intoxicated with alcohol or drugs. Or maybe you were on a road of no return, a life without Christ and no hope for tomorrow. Spiritual transformation is when God intervenes in your life and introduces you to your destiny. It's the reason for living. It's the reason why you serve him. It is his call that God has placed on your life. And when God calls you, when God touches you, when God puts his hand on you, no matter how hard you fight, no matter how much you cry, no matter how much you deny, you cannot kick against the prick. I, I don't care how deep in sin you were up. I don't care how far you were from the shore up. I don't care how many times you were going down for the last time. Up. When God puts his hand on you, up, you can't resist the critic. Up. You can't resist God's call. You can't resist God's touch. Up. And so it's important for us to recognize uh, uh, that it's a call from God that cannot be resisted. Spiritual transformation is your introduction to God's purpose and plan for your life. It is your introduction to life as a child of God. Uh, God spoke in a loud voice. He said, Saul, why do you persecute me? God was saying to Saul, when you fight against the people of God, when you fight against the church, when you fight against the family of God, you're also fighting against me. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. And Saul heard his voice loud and clear. I, I, I just want to make a little a note here. Uh, uh, many times we're upset. Many times we don't understand decisions. Uh, 
Many times we question what the church is doing and where the church is going. But I want you to know that whenever you fight against God's plan, whenever you fight against God's pastor, God's preacher, God's minister, whenever you fight against the purpose of God and what he's doing, you may not understand, but remember whenever you fight against God's man, God's purpose, God's will, you're fighting against God himself. So Jesus is saying to Saul and to everyone who has not responded to his call, what is he saying? He's saying that you are chosen. It makes no sense to try to resist God's call because God always gets his man or his woman. Saul was self-righteous. He was a one-man judge and jury. He hated the church, and he hated the people of God. He was complicit in the stoning of Stephen, yet he is chosen to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. What we must remember is that Jesus always initiates the call to salvation, to salvation and service. And, 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 and the important thing is you can look at the person next to you, look at the person in front of you, look at the person behind you, uh, but you never know who God is calling. You never know who God has put his hand on. Get your mouth off of people. Get your mouth off of what God is doing in somebody's life because you don't know the call that God has on somebody. You don't know how God is working in them and through them. You don't know where God wants to take them. Um, so it's best to get your mouth off of people of God um, and let God have his way. Um, you've got six months to mind your own business um, and you've got six months to leave mine alone. Um, you've got to let God have his way, let God do his thing, um, and whoever God wants to use, you've got to sit back and say, I'll be satisfied. Whoever God wants to bless, whoever God wants to promote, whoever God wants to rise up to the top of, you've got to say, I bless the Lord at all times, and I thank him for his mercies and his grace. Touch somebody and say, let God be God. It's an interesting to me that it was God who orchestrated the confrontation with Saul on the road to Damascus. Saul knew the Old Testament law. He knew the commandments. He knew scripture. But what Saul did not know is about the grace of God. Grace is never intended to destroy you. Regardless of your faults, regardless of your denials, regardless of your failures, grace is God's undeserved favor built in his mercies. And no matter what you're going through on this morning, I got a word for you. All you need is a little more grace. No matter what the problem, no matter what the hardship, no matter how the adversary is fighting you, I want you to know on this morning, if you don't hear anything else I say, that all you need is a little more grace. Grace is God's favor, which we can never deserve. Mercy is God's forgiveness for the punishment that we do deserve. We are all sinners, and we are all saved by grace. Every believer is saved by grace so that none of us can boast about our title, so that none of us can boast about our talent, so that none of us can boast about our work. We are all saved by grace, and grace is given by God. Remember David? He went from a shepherd boy to king. Not even the prophet Samuel knew that David had an anointing on his life. If you don't know it, God is calling you, and what God wants you to know is that his grace is sufficient what god is doing is waiting for you to answer the call stop making excuses up stop saying what you can't do up stop saying what the devil won't allow you to do up and you got to remember what the word of god declares i can do all things through christ 
who is the strength of my life. Uh, God has given you enough grace to do what he's called you to do. God has given you enough grace to go where he's called you to go. God has given you enough grace to say what he wants you to say. Uh, and so you've got to get up. Uh, you've got to believe with all your heart and your mind I've been chosen. And you've got to say I am what I am by the grace of God. Uh, I may not be everything I ought to be. Uh, but I thank God I'm not what I used to be. Uh, because grace has taken a hold of my life. Uh, and I'm so glad that he saved me. I'm, I'm so glad he found me. I'm, I'm so glad he wrapped his arms around me. And that's why I give him the praise. That's why I lift him up. That's why I magnify his name. Because he's been good. And he's been good all the time. I need somebody to give him 30 seconds of your best praise right now. Understand this. God chose us before we chose him. Saul didn't know it, but he was God's chosen vessel. Saul didn't know it, but he would become an instrument in God's hands for the rest of his life. Saul didn't know it, but on the road to Damascus, his destiny would change forever. Saul was God's choice to be the major theologian of the New Testament church. He wrote more of the New Testament than any other apostle. Yes, believe it or not, God chose you before you chose him. He chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestinated us to be adopted as his sons. And that's why, for no other reason, always remember you owe him the praise. You owe him the glory. You owe him the honor. Nobody ought to make you clap your hands. Nobody ought to make you shout hallelujah. But sometimes you've got to say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, something on the inside bubbles over. Thank God for saving me. Put your hands together and let's give him some praise. Remember what he told Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb, and I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not harm you, but to give you hope and to give you a future. And so there are some practical lessons that we can learn from the conversion, the transformation of Saul. First. Saul learned who Jesus is. There can be no transformation without acknowledging the fact that Jesus is the son of the living God. Saul asked the question, who are you, Lord? True transformation, which leads to conversion, will always require that Jesus reveal himself to you as Lord and Christ. If you are saved, sanctified, filled with the power, it's because you recognize, it's because you know that he is both Lord and Christ. If I've got a witness, just lift your hands and shout, hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus takes the repenting heart on a visit to Calvary to see him as a sacrifice for our sins. Conversion, transformation, reveals God as the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Second, Saul learned that he was who he was in the sight of God. True transformation always allows you to see yourself as God sees you. And some of us sees, see ourselves in the wrong light. Some of us don't see ourselves as God sees us. How does God see you? God sees you with a high calling in Christ Jesus. How does God see you 
God sees you as more than a conqueror. How does God see you? He sees you as the head and not the tail. How does God see you? He sees you with victory on every side. How does God see you? He sees you because you are his creation. Because you're living to his praise. Because you're living a life of sacrifice to him. God sees you and he promised uh, I'll fight every battle and I'll bring down every high place. Uh, how does God see you? Uh, he sees you running through troops and leaping over walls. Uh, how does God see you? He sees you defeating every demon in hell. Uh, how does God see you? He sees you as a son or daughter of the king. Uh, how does God see you? He sees you giving him praise, uh, giving him honor and saying thank you Lord for all you've done in my life. How does God see you? He sees you. And God says your name is victory. I've got victory when I come in. I've got victory when I go out. I've got victory in the morning. I've got victory in the evening. God is my refuge and my strength. And I can do everything, everything, everything. Because God is the truth of my life. Saul's transformation also demanded that he would never, ever again be called Saul. But Jesus would demand that he change his name to Paul. And Paul means small or little. And so Apostle Paul knew that whatever he accomplished would be small in comparison to the work of God through Jesus Christ. Nothing anyone will ever do can match Calvary and the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Let me say it again, nothing that you or I will ever do, nothing that anyone will ever do will match Jesus Christ going to Calvary and being raised from the dead. But always remember this, even though we may do small things, little becomes much when you put it in the hands of the master. And so no matter what little thing God asks you to do, no, no matter what little task you have, no matter what little assignment you have, um, always remember that it may seem small, um, it may seem insignificant, it may seem like you're important, uh, unimportant, but always remember this, that when you put it in the hands of Jesus, uh, that when you turn it over to him, little becomes much when you put it in the Savior's hands. Uh, and so here it is, Paul took the gospel to Rome, the greatest city of his time. Uh, Paul wrote 13 of the 27 books of the New Testament. Paul wrote the book of Romans with its the Magna Carta of scripture. In other words, what Paul understood, what Paul learns, uh, is that the word of God told him, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And Paul says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, proving what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. In other words, what Paul is saying to us in Romans is that we've got the mercies of God to rely on. We've got to be holy. We've got to be acceptable. We've got to give our reasonable service to him. He did not call you to sit in the pew with your fingers crossed, your hands crossed, your feet. He didn't call you just to sit there and act like you don't know. But God chose you. He called you because he wants you to be his witness. God chose you. He calls you because he wants you to be a living epistle. God called you and chose you because he wants you to present your body as a living sacrifice. Transformation takes place when we recognize that our physical bodies must be dedicated for the service of God. Uh, you ask me why I don't do the things I used to do. Uh, you ask me why I don't go places I used to go. Uh, it's because I've dedicated myself. Uh, I've dedicated my heart, my mind to the service of the king. Uh, I can't be in the club on Saturday uh, and sing with the praise team on Sunday. Uh, I can't, I can't, I can't live that kind of life. Uh, I can't live over here uh, and come back over here like I'm who God is. Uh, uh, but when you 
give your body a living sacrifice. You dedicate your time. You dedicate your service. You dedicate your resources. And some things you have to give up and say, I won't be back no more, no more, no more. Sometimes you've got to look at life and you've got to look at some things that you've done and you've got to say, hit the road, Jack. I won't be back no more, no more, no more. I'm, I'm on the Lord's side. I'm, I've got the Holy Ghost. I'm, I've got shouting in my feet. I'm, I've got clapping in my hands. I'm, I've got something on the inside that works on the outside. And I'm glad. I said, I'm glad that I've got it. I'm, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm, I'm glad I'm sanctified. I'm glad I'm Holy Ghost filled and I'm fire baptized. Lift your hands up and give him some praise. Our bodies, when Paul says, Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Paul recognized that our bodies become vehicles for the expression of how we live and how we serve God. Becoming living sacrifices means that we're not dead like the sacrifices they offered before Jesus died and went to Calvary. We, we are in a time where we've got to make decisions about how we want to have church. Uh, we can be dead and act like we don't know. Or we can say like the writer, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And, and, and I know I'm not talking about this church, but I'm talking about some other churches I go to. Uh, uh, where they don't have a praise, where they don't have a song, uh, where, where nobody will stand up and shout hallelujah, where you have to make them stand up and sit down and give God honor and glory. Uh, uh, but we've got to be like the writer said. Um, I was glad when they sent unto me. Um, we've got to be like the writer said. Uh, we're not dead sacrifices, but we're alive. Uh, and when you're alive, you hear some noise. Uh, when you're alive, you clap your hands. Uh, when you're alive, you open your mouth and you give them praise. Uh, this is not a dead church, uh, but we're a living church. Uh, we serve a living God. Uh, and my praise is alive and well uh, because God has done so much for me. Uh, I cannot help it, uh, but I've got to give him the praise. Uh, I cannot help it. Up, but I've got to give him some glory. Up. I don't know what you come to do, up, but I've got to come in. Up. I've got to say thank you, Lord. Up. I don't know what you come to do, but sometimes up, I've got to lift my hands. Up. I don't know what you come to do, but sometimes up, I've got to dance my dance up, because the Lord has been good to me. Up. I'm a living sacrifice, and I want to give him all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And so the sacrifice, making your body a living sacrifice, demands a total change in lifestyle. We're no longer conforming or fashioning our thinking after the desires and habits of this world because thinking of this world, the thoughts of this world, the actions of this world are governed by Satan, who is the prince of the power of the air. Transformation means that you keep on renewing your mind with the word of God. You keep on feeling power and faith and hope. A transformation is a metamorphosis or total change in the way you think about everything. The total change is from the inside out. Transformation is when something on the inside can work on the outside and people can see there's a change in my life. And so the key, the key, the key to transformation is that you've got to change your mind. In other words, the mind is the center of your thoughts, your attitude, your feelings, and your actions. You continue to renew your mind by prayer, supplication, 
and the download of things that are good and acceptable to God. The mind is like a computer. If you download junk and erroneous information, the only thing that's going to come out is junk and erroneous information. God's will and purpose is only what is good for every believer. So doing his will becomes our reasonable service. Spiritual transformation makes us think more like Christ. It all begins with the mind. Look at somebody and repeat these words. Change your mind, change your mind. and you change your world. Paul would become the apostle to the Gentiles. Paul would open the church, church door to the church and allow Gentiles to come into the kingdom. Paul would be beaten by many stripes, shipwrecked for more than one occasion, and placed in prison for the name of Jesus. Paul would be afflicted in his body and suffer some unknown illness, which is called a thorn in the flesh. He asked God to heal him only to discover that God's grace is sufficient. So whatever you're going through right now, I repeat once again, God's grace is sufficient. Whatever you're asking for, whatever you're waiting for, be encouraged because his grace is sufficient. God will turn it around and God promised that he would take care of you. How do I know? Because he said that his grace is sufficient. Whatever you're going through, look at somebody and say, there will be glory after this. After I suffer for a while, after I go through for a while, after I cry for a while, you don't have to worry about it because there will be glory after this. I will get my dance back. I will get my shout back. I will get my praise back. I will lift my hands. I will come in the sanctuary one more time and give my testimony. Whatever you're going through, there will be glory after this. So don't, don't allow your denial about who God is kill your destiny. Saul denied Jesus was the son of God. Saul persecuted the church and tried to stop the spread of the gospel. But God used him to become the apostle born out of due time. God transformed his life because he is the God of a second chance. Peter denied Christ three times and said, I'm not one of them. But God used Peter to preach the first message of salvation on the day of Pentecost. And 3,000 were saved. Why? God transformed his life. And he's the God of a second chance. Your past mistakes and your faults should not define who you are on today. God looks beyond your faults and sees your needs. Uh, and God wants to transform your life. Um, tell your haters, um, I am what I am by the grace of God. Uh, and don't allow your past denials to destroy your destiny. Um, let every demon in hell know that was then, but this is now. Um, I'm no longer a hater, but now I'm a praiser. Um, I'm no longer a denier, but now I'm a worshiper. Um, I'm no longer looking down at myself and my situation, uh, but now I see God lifting me up, blessing me up, making ways out of no way. Um, never chase after your destiny. Because your destiny will always find you. David was tending sheep, but Samuel the prophet found him. Moses hid on the backside of the mountain for 40 years, but God found him. God knows where you are. God knows who you are. And when the time is right, God will find you. Uh, uh, the prodigal son 
uh, father never went looking for him, but the prodigal son came home. And what I'm saying to somebody on this morning, uh, you're coming home. Whether you like it or not, you're coming home. Whether you believe it or not, you're coming home. Your sons and your daughters are coming home. Your husband, your wife, they're coming home because God has a destiny that he's declared for them. God has a purpose and a will for them. And no matter where they are, no matter how hard they fight, no, no matter where they run and where they hide, God always gets his man. God always gets his woman. God always gets those that he wants to bring in to the house of grace. So let me conclude on this morning, let your resume speak for itself because God wants to use the sum total of all your experience to glorify him. As Pastor Tony Evans reminds us, Jesus wants to turn your mess into a miracle. God wants to make your mistakes and make them miracles that prove that he can do anything but fail. God used all of Paul's experiences to prepare him for what he called him to do. And God wants to take your experience, sanctify them, and use them to fulfill the call that he has on your life. He wants to use your resume to fulfill your destiny. You can't dwell on the past mistakes and failures because our mistakes and our failures prepare us for our destiny. And so what you've got to do is learn how to redeem the time because time is given to you for one purpose, to fulfill your destiny and answer God's call on your life. Time is God's way of saying, I'm still with you. I'm still waiting for you to answer the call. It's time to answer God's call. Every new day is a gift from God, and that's why we call it the present. Time is consistent with destiny and purpose. Destiny and purpose are always wrapped up in time. And so on this morning, what you must do, you must redeem the time, and you must understand that time is your most important commodity. When you commit yourself to redeem the time, God will restore lost time. He promised I will restore the time that the locust and the can of worm has eaten. So the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Don't waste precious time because God chose you. I'm going to take my seat. But before I take my seat, let me say this to all my sisters. Don't get it twisted. Like Queen Esther, you have been chosen for such a time as this. And to all my brothers, Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift that God has given you. And to everybody, say, Lord, I'm available to you. I'll do whatever you want me to do, and I'll go wherever you want me to go. You're born again, you're chosen, and you must understand that the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. And so what am I chosen to do? You're chosen to prove that God has a people called out for his namesake. You're chosen to prove that God is the God of a second chance. You're chosen to prove that God saves to the uttermost. You're chosen to prove that God has his hand on you. He chose you, had you on his mind, and when he went to the grave and rose again the third day, day. Uh, he wouldn't snatch the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Uh, and now you have the keys to the kingdom uh, because God chose you. Uh, you have the keys to the kingdom. Uh, and whatever you bind in heaven, it shall be bound. Uh, you have the keys to the kingdom. Whatever you lose, it shall be loosed. Uh, so stop looking like you don't know uh, and tell the adversary, tell every demon in hell, uh, I'm going to lose some of my blessings. Uh, I'm going to bind some of the stuff 
the devil is doing in my life. You don't have to take it. Bind it in the name of Jesus. You're chosen to bind it. You're chosen to loosen it. You're chosen to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You're chosen to pray a prayer of faith and let chains and shackles be broken. You're chosen. You're chosen. You're chosen. And no matter what anybody says, he chose me. And I'm glad about it. Put your hand on yourself and say, he chose me. I don't know why he did it, but I'm so glad he did. And because he did it, I'm going to praise him. Because he did it, I'm going to magnify him. Because he did it, I'm going to lift him up. He's the God of my salvation. And I'm so glad he chose me. Every head is bowed. Let's stand to our feet. Didn't have to do it. Knocked on your door. Said, come on. Come into the kingdom. Saved you. Healed you. Kept you. Blessed you. Touch somebody and say, I have no complaints. He's a good God. A wonderful Savior. And all he asks in return is that we would give him a praise. That's all he ever. We are created for the praise of his glory. So tell the devil from this day forward. He chose me. And there's nothing you can do about it. Tell every demon in hell, you should have got me before I went to the water. You should have got me before I got baptized. You should have got me before I spoke in tongues when the Holy Ghost came. I'm, tell the devil, it's too late now. He chose me, and I'm glad about it. He chose me, and I'm going to praise him for it. He chose me. And there's nothing anybody can do to make me change my mind. Every head is bowed. Every head is bowed. Every head. Once again, take somebody by the hand. Squeeze those hands. Heart to heart, breast to breast. He chose you. He chose you. He chose you. And whatever you need from him right now, He'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. If you're sick, he'll heal your body. If you need deliverance, he is a deliverer. If you need to be kept, he's a keeper. Squeeze those hands. Let somebody know I'm praying with you. I'm praying for you. Whatever you need, our God is able. Whatever you're asking for, he's able to provide. Nothing too hard, nothing impossible. Our God is able. And for that, for that, for that, we're going to give him praise. We're going to give him glory. We're going to give him honor. And so we ask right now, Lord Jesus, that you have your own way. Sanctify us, Lord. Bless us, Lord Jesus. Give us strength, Lord Jesus. And let us know, Lord Jesus Christ, that we are chosen by you to be more than conquerors. The apple of your eye the head not the tail bless when we go in bless when we come out blessed on every side because you're the God of our salvation now everybody look toward heaven and shout hallelujah come on shout hallelujah one more time if you love him shout hallelujah and say I bless you Lord
Put your hands together all over this building. Come on, if you are appreciative that God chose you, put your hands together. Come on. He pulled you out of darkness. He stepped over everybody else and called your name. Give him your praise. Give him your open up to Give him the best praise you know how. Look at somebody before you're seated. Turn to two or three people and say, he chose me. And I'm glad about it. Come on, look at somebody else and say, he chose me. And I'm glad about it. He chose me. And I'm glad about it. Open up your mouth. Let the devil know I'll hit the road, Jack. I say, you don't know my story. You don't know what he brought me out of. You don't know why I act the way I act. But I think I'll give him a praise.
necessary for you. The Bible says repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Come on. Come on. Yes, Lord. That's concern. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody trying to get a breakthrough. Hey, 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 yes, sir. Somebody trying to get deliverance from their past. Jesus is waiting. All you have to do is confess with your mouth. Open up your mouth. Right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Someone hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's happening right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's happening right now. If I can get you to give him one praise right now. Come on. Come on, come on, come on.
Come on, come on, come on. chose me. He chose me. I won't go back. I won't go back. My Lord has been good to me. Come on, put your hands together one more time. Man. Oh my God, oh my God. He chose me. Man, how did the world, would he look beyond everybody else and choose me? Somebody ought to give him thank a uh, thank you. I ask the question again, is there someone that has not ever been, never been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins? If you are in this house, now is the time. Come on. We have water, we have clothing, we have all of the things necessary for your walk to be complete in God. Come on. Hallelujah. The Lord has been good to us this morning. Come on. If you enjoyed that powerful message, from the vice presider of the churches of our Lord Jesus Christ incorporated in the person of Apostle Bradford Berry. If you enjoyed that message, give God the praise. Come on, show him that Refuge Temple appreciates that word that fell from his lips. Thank you. But before we go any further, we are asking that every woman that is here right now would come back at 4.30. I, I guarantee you, 
I guarantee you, you will take something home even to add to what this is. It's going to be the icing on top of the cake. It's going to help you to understand how we can move forward in Christ and how the women of God have purpose in ministry and purpose in church. It's important for you to come. I'm asking each and every one of you. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to keep it to just women in the sanctuary. Amen. If you're going to come sit out in the cars or go down to the other building, but this is for them, and I know that the Lord is going to bless. Look at somebody and say, get ready to come back. <laughs> I guarantee you. I, I, at this time, before we go any further, we, we want to recognize uh, Lady Norma Berry in a special kind of way. We want her to stand and maybe she'll greet us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, put your hands together as she comes. Praise the Lord, everyone. Grace and peace to all of the wonderful, precious saints of the Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't think he would have me anything to say since he told me to come back this afternoon. But any time anyone asks me to say something for the Lord, I am willing because I am chosen. <laughs> ah, I thank God for Jesus today. I thank God for that word. And, you know, you know, I had prepared a little something because it was kind of last minute, but... He said a lot of the things that I was planning to say <laughs> this afternoon. So we'll see just what the Lord has to say unto us. But how many in here are glad that they are saved <laughs> and sanctified <laughs> and filled with the Holy Ghost? I like to say I love the life I live and I live the life I love. Hallelujah. Don't get me started. Don't play nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Now you told them only women, so uh, we gonna have anybody that can, you know, like play I, up on the. I'll put some earplugs in him and let him play. Oh, okay. All right. I don't want nobody to write no letter on me, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be good this afternoon. We just gonna talk to the ladies for a little bit. How about that? I love you with the love of the Lord in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together. I guarantee you, you will be tremendously blessed. Amen. Come on back at 430. Amen. We want all of our women leaders, amen, that are here. Ida Thompson, amen, who's in charge of our women's council. Amen. It's, uh, Natasha Davis, who's in charge of our, mini our mini missionaries. Amen. Mother Glover, who's in charge of our seniors. Amen, our mother's boy, amen, Mother Kennedy is in charge of our seniors. I got it right this time. Amen, and not only her, but the Sister Carolyn Wolf is not here. Amen, I guarantee you, she's, I'm pulling all the men out so y'all can talk freely. Uh, they had a program once before where they had it, and as pastor, I went down uh, to see what was going on, and when I got, everybody stopped talking. When I walked in, so I said, uh, I think I'm holding up something. I sat there for a few more minutes, and then I left. Amen. And as soon as I left, I heard them start laughing and talking again. So this is a great opportunity for you to come and listen to some things that are going to inspire you to grow in the knowledge of who Christ is in your life. We appreciate each and every one of you. Amen. Thank God for all of you. We want you to know how appreciative we are for the berries that took time out of their schedule to come and be a part of the service. <clears throat> On next Sunday morning, come out, you will hear Elder David Hollis from Ohio. He's gonna be in the play. Amen, come on out and be blessed of the Lord. At this time, uh, I want to make sure that we take our offering. Is there one, uh, as the deacons prepare themselves, we ask that you bring your tithing and offering and lay it on the altar. Amen. God has been good to you. I can see it. I can see, I can see it. The Lord has opened doors for you, and he's consistently opening doors. Standing on your feet, everyone all over this building, amen, now is the time. 
coming from the rear. Don't leave without the benediction. Coming from the rear, bringing your tithing and offering and laying it on the altar. Come on, from the rear. We certainly praise and thank God for the beautiful service we've had on this afternoon. And just by way of a brief reminder, those of you who are planning to travel with us to Charleston on Saturday for the trip to the International African American History Museum, be sure that you've taken care of all of your responsibilities today. Please and thank you. And we look forward to a wonderful fellowship. And we also would like to remind you that throughout this month, we still need your donations for sister care. Thank you so very much. The list is in your newsletter, or you can see any of the Women's Council officers. Come on, put your hands together. <laughs> Amen. Please, those of you that want to go to the African American Museum with the seniors, make sure that you make sure that you take care of your business so that you can go without any hiccups. Let us stand all over this place. There's someone still tearing for the Holy Ghost. Somebody's still looking for deliverance. That doesn't mean that we need to start talking all kind of other stuff. Amen. It is time for us to pray that someone will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Elder Myers will give us our benediction.
lifting holy hands in his presence. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for choosing us on this day. And God, as we exit from this place, but never from your presence, go with us. Clear the roadways of any hurt, harm, or danger until we come together again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We ask that you would please exit the sanctuary quietly as we have a soul that is seeking the Holy Ghost. If you stay in, that means you're praying. In Jesus' name, let us exit quietly. Okay. Let us exit quietly in Jesus' name. Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The brotherhood, we ask that you would please meet 